Welcome to episode four of the Play Action Podcast presented by Warrior Student Media. I'm Brandon Smith. He's TJ Hodge. What's up, guys? And we're going to get into the week eight NFL recap with the 49ers and the Bears first up. Now, I picked the Bears to win this one because I didn't think our defense would fumble the bag, but spoiler, they did. Um, giving up more than 150 yards on the ground for the third straight game. Um, and then the Niners just give, giving the ball to Debo Samuel and letting him eat. And that's what he did. He had over 170 yards and... You know, I think the, I think the Bears should probably sell at the trade deadline because where's this team going? They don't have a first round pick or a fourth round pick, so you got to try and get some draft capital to help build around your young quarterback. Yeah, this is a team that doesn't have many like you know star young guys. I mean, as you can develop fields, of course you wouldn't move on for them. That'd be stupid. Khalil Herbert has shown to be a solid feature back. Maybe Montgomery can be on the move. Yeah, I don't. Ex- I don't expect it. I don't expect it, especially but, with him on IR. He's not going to get exa- traded. Exactly, no one's going to even want him. I think Robinson needs to get traded. I think Robinson, Robinson get needs to be gone. The only receiver that I think you keep is Mooney, and then honestly, BJ King Grant is like a return man. Now with the Bears, when when I look at this team, there's only three guys I think that should be untouchable: Justin Fields, Roquan Smith, and Jalen Johnson. Everyone else, you think? Of? I think everybody else can go. I can I can understand that. Maybe you want to keep Mooney just for a receiver to. I think I think you keep Mooney because he seems to have really good chemistry with Fields. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, Mooney has uh, undoubtedly been the best receiver on this team. But I mean, I think you have to keep him untouchable too, with how young he is, with that yeah. connection. You got to keep. And he has potential. And he has plenty of potential. We saw he's an incredible route runner, and that's something you see, like seeing that out of a young receiver, isn't all that common. I mean, they usually have all their physical traits that get them drafted early. Yeah. And there's a reason why he fell. And it's because of his size. And it was because of his size, but his route running just got, makes up for it all. He's got great route running. He's fast. Solid hands. he got really good hands. I wouldn't say really good. He's had a couple drops the past couple games, but, you know, I think I think this game said more about the Bears than it did the Niners because I think, well, Jimmy G played well, the Bears defense, they folded this week. That's mm-hmm. the best way to put it because, I mean, I get that they didn't have Klimek, but you had every other starter out there. And yeah. losing Eddie Jackson does not matter because he's bad. I was going to say, Eddie Jackson is a like, – people were saying like, – I've seen tweets saying, like, oh, yeah, this that, this proves that Eddie Jackson's a big part of this defense. I'm like, no, he can't tackle for his life. And this is the guy so who – So he's actually pretty decent in coverage. I can't stand Eddie Jackson, but he's pretty good in coverage. And that, yeah, but, like, this is the guy who literally said, yeah, everyone can tackle. During one of the practices, nope. and literally he can't he can't. It's about the worst life. thing you can get caught on the mic for him. I think the biggest thing that comes out of this is I genuinely believe Garoppolo should be traded now. After he just had a good he game. He won't, but... He, he won't, but he should. Because the 49ers are in a position where they should just start Lance, and worst comes to worst, they have a high draft pick. They get a good player to build their own life. Exactly. I, don't, I understand they don't have their first rounder either. That's going to Miami. But... You have a high second rounder that can get you a solid, like that can get you a solid either offensive lineman possibly, or get you a solid linebacker to go with. They need another receiver. A corner, too. a corner, a corner could be a big one. A receiver too. I mean, like you can get solid options in the early second round. Yeah. So I think trading Garoppolo, starting Lance, again, worst comes worst, or maybe you have a low draft pick and you realize Lance has tons of potential. You know, it's one or the other. There's no downside. You know, you're not in a win now position. No, you're you're a, you're a subpar team. Yeah, the Fortnite is a definition of mediocre. So yeah, and I think I don't know if that team's going to go anywhere. Will John Lynch is still the general manager because they draft these injury-prone players, and then Kyle Shanahan he doesn't know how to use them. Mm-hmm. I mean, they drafted Brandon Ayuk, and while he did get a lot of good snaps this week, they had, they don't get him the ball. I mean, I and mean, he doesn't get that many snaps. I mean, guys like Trent Sherfield were getting more snaps than him. Past couple, really most of the start of the season, um, so I think I think the Bears should get rid of some players, especially Allen Robinson, to trade deadline. Um, and looking now, it looks like that they haven't um, done anything yet. So we're gonna go now to the Browns and the Steelers. 
Um, I picked the Browns in this one. I want to say I picked Pittsburgh. I picked Pittsburgh, and look at that, they won. Yeah, they did, whatever. Um, yeah. Now, in all seriousness, I think <clears throat> this was the type of game that um, they relied heavily, heavily on their rookies. Najee Harris was big, and then Pat Fryer had a big uh, touchdown catch. Oh, I was going to say, both are the only guys who had touchdowns. Uh, we watched our kicker get injured. Yeah, kick, kick field goal. Kicker, uh, and he's a little concussed at this point. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I love, I love the play call. Don't get me wrong. The whole point was to keep aggressive throughout this whole game. And against the Browns team, I think keeping aggressive is what can win you games. This yeah. is a very. The Browns are a very conservative team. You know, once they get on top, they can stay on top. But if we keep a, their plan was to stay aggressive and make it a shootout because Baker with an injured shoulder. I understand it's not strong shoulder or anything. It's it, not throwing shoulder, keeping it aggressive, making him throw the ball down the field. Even when he's fully healthy is really how you beat the Browns. I remember, <clears throat> just because the biggest comparison I can think of with Baker and his whole shoulder situation is in 2019 when Trubisky had the same type of thing. It was just not throwing shoulder. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, well, it shouldn't affect him. He came back and he had that brace. Yeah. And it just it messed with him. And yeah, I think he never funny. really got got back to that and he said that it really impacted him he's the biggest um recent how do i say it he's the most recent example of that type of injury yeah and and i think before that injury trubisky that injury kind of just changed everything for him because it happened really early in the 2019 season and they were coming off such a successful year and he came back and he was just never the same and that's basically, obviously, that's a very similar comparison to now, you know, Baker early in the season, massive shoulder. Injury. And we still don't know what Baker is. And we don't. I mean, it's really, it's it's not even that we don't know what he is. It's just we don't know where he can be consistently. Yeah. Because we've seen flashes of him being <clears throat> great. You know, he was really good in the playoff game last Second year. Second half of last year, he was really good. Yeah, first half of last year, he was not. Now, I think what they need to do is trade Od- Odell Beckham because Agreed. He's- it's kind of like he just doesn't have the connection with Baker. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, people argue against that trade because they're everyone's saying you know OBJ is oh, not in his prime anymore either. Yeah, people are saying like, oh my god, he's such a good receiver, even though he's people are crazy to say that Baker does better without him. He does, and I mean, I don't. I'm not going to even say that he fully does because of Odell alone, but. The connection isn't there, and you can still probably get a decently high draft pick for him, or maybe a lower one, and then maybe a, a receiver to replace him. You know, from another team. You get a second round pick. Get a sec. Yeah, get a second rounder, and I feel like second round receivers are going to be pretty solid in this draft. So if you really want to go and draft another guy, you know, this year is probably your chance to do it. A guy like George Pickens from Georgia or John. Yeah, Mitchell if he Bama. if Pickens declares, I don't know if he will with his injury. But. That is true, but I mean, again, we've seen. And credit to the Steelers. <clears throat> I mean, this isn't just about Baker. I mean, Baker. It is true. He Baker was just kind of let down, I think, by his supporting cast. But the question still remains of whether or not to pay Baker. I mean, because no, I don't. I don't see a world where paying Baker makes this team good. You know, you're gonna. You need a. It, 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 Here's what winning. Problem. When can you upgrade from? Can you? I don't know if I trust the Browns organization to upgrade from Baker. That's funny because I think the opposite. I, I mean, as much as I don't like the Browns, I think they have one of the best front offices. Oh, I agree. I mean, Andrew Barry. There's a reason Andrew Barry was the youngest GM ever at 32. Like yeah. that's in, like he is a very smart. He knows what he's doing. He's he's getting good. Good. He's good at drafting. You know, getting guys like Jedrick Wills, Donovan Peoples Jones late in like the sixth round. Yeah, was a was a steal. He's been a big contributor. I mean, Andrew Barry is one of the probably <clears throat> I'd say one of the smartest GMs in this league. If I'm being completely honest, he just he he really wants to win now, and I feel like. And you can't blame him. I mean, the Browns no. are in a position for the first time in 20 plus years to actually go out and win a Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, and they have the right coach to do it. Stefanski's good. Well, Stefanski. I mean, and we all thought in 2019 that the Browns would. That was we thought that was the year. Mm-hmm. Well, Freddie Kitchens happened. Yeah, and. Then, you brought in, uh, you brought in Kevin Stefanski. Uh, the OC. I didn't like to hire even at that point. I really did, and that was mainly because Nick Chubb and Dalvin Cook's running styles were pretty similar back in 2019. Yeah, and that run scheme that Kevin Stefanski ran, I thought would fit perfectly with Nick Chubb, and it did because Nick Chubb was second in the league in rushing yards last year. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, what easily like leading receive uh, rushing numbers. But again, you know, Derrick Henry had that his two thousand yard season. He's gonna have another one, but oh, I mean, he's hurt now, so he's at, he's gonna miss some time. Um, six to ten weeks. Six to ten That's weeks. Nice. Um, we're gonna go now to Patriots Chargers. Um, I think when it, when you look at this game and you just look at the two young quarterbacks and how they played, Mac Jones pushing the ball down the field a little bit more. Um, he had a deep shot really early in the game to Aguilar. Um, now, the Patriots are, are they're four and four now. And with the trade deadline approaching, you have to wonder what they're going to do. Um, do they stick it out with this roster and ride out the season and see what they can do? Or do you try and go get another weapon for Mac Jones? Like maybe an Allen Robinson or a Brandon Cooks. Maybe bring Brandon Cooks back to New England. Bringing Brandon Cooks back to New England, especially seeing Mac Jones push the ball down the field more, like you just mentioned, would be a very smart move. I mean, that's really where Brandon Cooks is utilized the most in Houston because Davis Davis Mills is a guy for Houston that can <clears throat> that would consistently push the ball down the field. I mean, I understand he's a rookie and he's not doing it good. No, but we're sh- we're showing that they're bringing down or that uh, bringing Brandon Cooks down the field and. You know, the ball is being thrown to him. And that's going to be the same way he's going to be utilized in New England. So I think that would be the best move for them. I'm not a fan of Allen Robinson here. I don't know where he fits. He could but, fit somewhere like Baltimore. Yeah, I, I think Baltimore would be a great spot. But I don't I don't expect him to get traded, unfortunately. You know, it's... The thing is with the Patriots, though, um, they've gotten great production from Matt Judon. He's yes. He's one of he's he was one of the best free agent signings this off season. It was turning out to be that. I didn't like the signing at first. I thought they gave him a little too much money, but he's been worth all of it and yeah. then some because I, he has just been a threat off the edge in those sick red sleeves. Yeah, I loved I love this uh, I love the signing. Didn't like the money involved, but proved me wrong so far. The red sleeves are iconic. Honestly, this year. Oh, yeah. You see the red sleeves, you know it's Judon. And I think the single digit also fits him really well. <laughs> genuinely reminds me of like a college, yeah. you know, top prospect lineman, you know, always wearing the single digits and is pl- just plays great each and every week. And that's exactly what Matt Judon is. Now, with the Chargers, we talked about the Patriots. They're 4-4 four and four in there. They still don't know what they really are because they beat some crummy teams. But with the Chargers... Um, they've lost the last couple games, and I trust Brandon Staley a lot to Love make Brandon. the right adjustments. Love Brandon Staley. Now the offense just has to has to get back on track because Herbert's been off the past couple games. Um, so I think with that, and you have to keep giving the ball to Eckler. He's a really good back. You have to you have to use all your weapons that you have. Um, just not Jared Cook because he's not good. Um, the, the more and more I look into each and every one of these teams and how they perform each week, the more I realize how many teams can use a better receiver, which is, I mean... And there's so many good receivers. Like, looking at the Chargers, they've got their receiving core on paper looks good. Their top two, it looks, yes. looks good. Yes. Mike Williams, elite deep threat. Keenan Allen is a great... I'm not even... I, he's a good route runner. An incredible route runner, great after the catch, but also be a very solid possession receiver. Yeah. You know, so you look at that. Mike, and, Mike Williams, great on a contested catch. Too. Exactly. And then you got like Jalen Guyton and Joshua Palmer as kind of that rotational uh, slot. But yeah. Like you, you, so like you look at that and you're like, man, this is a great receiving core. But there's what always, it seems like there's only one guy who stands out each week and we never know who it is. It's like the Bucks, you know, like the Bucks have a great receiving core. But either, you know, like Mike Evans had a good week or then. But the Bucks are able to do that. Exactly. And I'm not saying that. That's why I'm just comparing the receiving cores themselves. The Chargers right. can't afford that. No. And especially with only two receivers, the Bucks can do it with like six or seven. Yeah, they have. They have a deep receiving core. There are five receivers on this roster. The four I named and then Andre Roberts, who they like just recently signed. Those yeah. are their only five guys. They can't afford to have two or three guys be bad and only one or two be okay. Now, I think when it comes to – and this feels like a good way to transition to Buck Saints. Um, I guess the big story with this game is um, 
Jameis Winston, he's out for the year now with the torn ACL. That hurts. Yeah. So now the question becomes, what do they do? Um, now, I don't know. I mean, Trevor Simeon is on the roster, and so is Taysom Hill and Ian Book. To be fair, Simeon didn't play bad. I want to just mention Sean Payton deserves a ton of credit. Yes. Because oh, yeah. Sean, Pay- Sean Payton's honestly up there for coach of the year. Sean Payton knows this player's skill sets better than anyone. Any, any coach. He's taking these horrible receivers and making them into something. Kevin White was the leading receiver for this team. Kevin White. This week? Yes. Wait, really? No. Okay, I actually did not. What? He also only had one catch. <laughs> oh, okay. One catch for 40 yards. Okay, okay. See, that makes more sense. That was his first catch in over three years. 40 yards. 40 yards down the sideline. What a guy. Now, I think... It's crazy. That, now, they got Marquez Callaway, um, Traquan Smith. I love Traquan Smith, and actually. Deontay Harris. Hey, and Ty Montgomery. Ty Montgomery's a, kind of just a... He's, he's kind of like Taysom. Yeah, he's a weapon. He's kind of like Taysom Hill. Just kind of throw him around. I honestly think they should be using him more. Who? Montgomery. Montgomery, yeah. I feel like Montgomery was... I love Montgomery in Green Bay. Yeah. I think there's ways to utilize him that can actually make him just like just make him a solid weapon. I mean, maybe just not as just a running back, not as a receiver. Guy. Yeah, put him in the slot, you know, have him just do whatever. Put him in the backfield, let him run those bubbles or something like that, you know, whatever. Just let him run something because he can make plays. Yeah, I think – and then when you look at the Bucks in this game, um, you just – they didn't move the ball for a lot of the first half. They couldn't get anything going. This was Tom Brady's worst game of the season. Oh, by far. I mean, the late interception, he was just he just wasn't on it in this game. But, you know, with the Bucks, there's no cause to panic. I don't think you just hey, the Saints seem to be Brady's kryptonite in the regular season. Oh, always. Because he's three and mm-hmm. uh since he's been in Tampa Bay against the Saints in the regular season. Yeah. No so I think the Bucks are fine. Um, now the NFC is pretty stacked, but they have a lot of they they have a lot of good players. They're well coached. There's nothing to really be concerned about. The NFC this year, at least as of right now, is very top heavy. It seems like you know there's, they have there's five really good teams, and you're like uh, and then there's like kind of a drop off there. You know? So yeah, you and, have, and the Bucks are one of those teams. So the Bucks are up there. No, I I genuinely think there's nothing to be worried about. You know, maybe the Saints catch up late in the season to win the division, but even then, the Bucks are like guaranteed a wild Saints card. are five and two. The Saints aren't a bad team. The They're Saints, a little coded. but again, with with Winston gone, what what do you do there at quarterback if they don't bring in anyone? Which I think they should bring in Cam Newton. I think that's pretty. They obvious. could bring in Cam Newton or. I keep bringing up the trade deadline. Trade deadlines today. Trade for Nick Foles. Trade for Nick Foles don't, or Andy Dalton. Probably Andy Dalton. Don't. No. I don't see. Okay. I don't think they. Sh- I don't think they will. They I think shouldn't they, trade it. it. Don't. It sounds like they're gonna keep looking like inside the organization for some help at quarterback. Um, it doesn't sound like they'll be interested in Cam Newton either. Which sucks. Yeah. Because I really think Cam Newton is like a great option. I, I think a playoff team will sign sign Cam Newton. And, like in December, if a quarterback goes down, if a quarterback goes down, I mean yes. Um. So yeah, I think Saints still. I don't know if I trust the Saints yet because they we've seen a couple different versions of them show up. I trust this defense. I trust your defense. Yeah. Maybe not the offense yet. But no. I also I also want to mention for the Bucks. I just want to say, do you think one? This is a question for you, really. Is do you think one of these tight ends get traded? Because I've been thinking that for think a they should. long time. I like, think who, where, like it'd be OJ Howard. You think so? Yeah, OJ Howard should go to somewhere like the Jets, where they need a vertical receiving threat. Green Bay. I think Green Bay is going. I think Green Bay is going to try and get Evan Ingram today. That is true. I love Evan Ingram in Green Bay. Yeah, yeah. I think Evan Ingram's really overhated. Yeah, he has some drop issues. But That's I think he's been fine this he's year. A, he's an incredible yeah, he's athlete fast. for a tight end. Incredible. There's a reason he was a first. Him and O.J. Howard were both first round picks in the same draft class. O.J. Howard is going to. Both are great. O.J. Howard is important. I'm not going to say O.J. Howard is a top 10 tight end because he doesn't get used that much. But he's got top 10 talent. May I just say he was being used a ton before, before he got injured. And before Gronk got there. Yeah, Gronk. I mean, Gronk isn't that. He's only a good tight end because of Brady. 
right? At least right now. Not before. Before he was like, he's a really good tight end. I'm about to say. No, I'm not. Okay. Yeah, no. He's a top three tight end all time. In my opinion, he's the best tight end of all time. I think it's Gonzalez. Tony Gonzalez. It, whatever. But yeah. whatever. Yeah, whatever. Um, just we're going to go now to Sunday Night Football, Cowboys-Vikings. And the big story for this game was um, Cooper Rush starting for Dak Prescott. And the Cowboys still came away with the win. And I think that says a lot about the defense, and it says a lot about their offensive skill players. Um, Ezekiel Elliott had the biggest play of the game on a third and 12, I think it was. And he just went to the outside, and he broke a couple of tackles and got down inside the five-yard line. And that was yeah, incredible play. And that got them what they needed. Got him into, obviously, end zone range. And, and then Amari Cooper was able to make the play. Yeah. Now, I think when it comes to um, the Vikings, they still got some work to do. Um, I don't know if Mike Zimmer's the answer at head coach right now. Um, I've seen a lot of Vikings fans. They think they should just blow this whole thing up. The, the Kirk Cousins era, the Mike Zimmer era. Um, you have a lot of veterans on that team that I feel like could contribute to winning teams. But they can't play well together. Anthony Barr played his first game since 2019. Yeah, I was. I mean, Anthony Barr is like was an elite linebacker for a while, yeah, until he got injured in 2020. And you, you know what? I'm I'm gonna go on a little rant here. There's one player on this team that I severely dislike. It's Harrison Smith. I knew you were gonna say Harrison that. Smith is just he's dirty. I've never liked him. I think he's always just he's always looking to. I get like a hard hitting safety. I love a hard hitting safety, and that's what I I like Smith's playing style. He had he had CD Lamb in a damn chill. Yeah, I know that. Like that, what the hell? That kind of bothered me. Or not kind of it bothered. It bo- me. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It's like okay, there was no reason for that. No, I, I like I think Harrison Smith is still a good safety, but hey, I'm glad the Vikings gave him a ton of money this off season. Now, I mean, okay, this I saw a tweet the other day. Uh... It was yesterday, actually, and Harrison Smith is thirty-two. He's thirty-two. He got. He's got like a four-year contract. He's he just got a four-year contract. He's not four-year extension. Yeah, so he's gonna be there until he's like thirty-six, thirty-seven. Yeah. I'm sure he retired before then, but probably no. But I was. I saw a tweet the, uh, yesterday about the Vikings. I can't remember who it was from, but it, I think it was a Vikings beat reporter, and he basically said the Vikings for the past like three, four years have been good enough to not be bad. But bad yeah. enough to not be good. Yeah, like, and it's like they because they they're not going to be like Super Bowl contenders ever with this roster. There's no, no way. They're just but they they won't be bad to the point where they need to rebuild. They're always in this like you know few pieces stage where well, a team thinks you know I need a couple more pieces make a playoff contender. They've tried and tried for a couple years now. You're bringing Justin Jefferson, Christian Darrisaw, you know, brought in Dalvin Tomlinson, got Michael Pierce back. I mean they. They got these. They guys. got players. They got players, and they can just never perform. I know. They're always there's always a couple weak spots on this team that just bring them down. Like the cornerback group this this year is what's bringing them down. Breland looked terrible. Breland looked awful this Breland year. Breland was awful. I loved the signing because I thought he was going to be a decent you know yeah. player. And, but that, and then Patrick terrible. Peterson sir, and he was like, he had a bad year last year, but he's been playing pretty well this he year. He was playing pretty well. And then, and then I, I I do like Cameron Dantzler. I do too, but he hasn't played it nearly as much as I had expected him to, especially early in the year. He was not getting the snaps. No. Which I feel like there was something behind, like behind the scenes because he is he was the best corner they had last year. Yeah. And there's just out of nowhere he's not playing. The big story for the Vikings now though is Daniel Hunter out for the year. Yeah. You which know, is I'm... a hard blow. Um, you just you, you hate to see that and. But, I mean, especially after last year, he had a neck injury last year, and he was out for the whole year. I was didn't play a single game last year. Played how many then? Six or seven. Six or seven games this year, and he's just he looked he looked pretty good this year too. I mean, it sucks to see. Um, mm-hmm. But we're gonna go now to our top three AFC and NFC teams, and let you start with the AFC. We'll start with the AFC. Um, number one. I think this is pretty easy. Or I'm not going to say pretty easy, but right now it's got to be Buffalo. Yeah, I, I have Buffalo one too. Buffalo, is, they've got a very solid roster. 
honestly though, I can't even lie. On paper, the roster doesn't even look incredible. It does not look like a Super Bowl roster. No. But they know what like they know Sean McDermott. Sean McDermott is an incredible coach. Brian the Bulls is a great offensive coordinator. The this coaching staff here is really the MVP. Yeah. Honestly, they know how they like util- they know how to utilize their running backs, and that was kind of most important because their running backs are don't look good. No. But like Josh Allen is an MVP contender. Uh, Diggs, Emmanuel Sanders looks like he's almost like pretty close to his prime years. Yeah, he's, he's been playing crazy. well this year. He's playing really good. Offensive line he doesn't look good at all. Play solid. You know, Tommy Sweeney as their tight end. He's the backup tight end, and they're making him look okay. Yeah, I think um, you know Buffalo's a their Buffalo's a really good team, and I think in the AFC they have just. A lot of teams that are right there. Yep, that's and exactly the I think I think the top two teams, at least for me, are pretty clear. Number two, I have Baltimore. Who okay. do you have? Number two, I got, and I know when we were making these lists, you were a little upset about this, but I got Vegas. Okay, Vegas. I mean, again, I feel, I really feel like most of the AFC, and I guess it's been know, season though. I'm ready for the Vegas collapse. And, you know what? And if, I, if that happens, I wouldn't even be too surprised. No. But I'm, we're, I'm talking about just right now. Derek Carr is playing the best football of his career. Derek Carr is playing amazing. The receipt, like Brian Edwards. Brian Edwards is breakout, awesome. breakout year. Yeah, I love Brian Edwards coming out of the draft. They drafted Brian Edwards and Lynn Bowden back to back draft picks. Lynn, Lynn Bowden's gone. Now. I mean, Lynn Bowden got traded before these the last year even started. Yeah, but I mean, they drafted two receivers back to back. And then ended up sticking with Brian Edwards. Did not have a good year, his rookie year. Played way worse than people expected him to. And I, I was hoping for a breakout. Nothing to this level, though. This is way better than I had expected. He's emerged as a really consistent weapon for Derek Carr. And like I said, I have Baltimore. Um, I think they are probably rece- they probably need another receiver to either go get one or contribute. Um, I love Devin DuVernay. Devin DuVernay is one of my favorite young wide receivers who is kind of underrated. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, that, that's kind of how I feel you, about Baltimore. And- I also want to mention for Vegas, you want to speak of a underrated player. Max Crosby. About, what? Max Crosby. That's one of them. You know, I was, I was going to say that too. Because, but I mean, he's getting, he's getting more. He's getting more recognition. As the past couple weeks he has been. But my guy right now for this team is Denzel Perriman. He okay. doesn't have many of the explosive plays. Or anything like that, you know. He has two fumble recoveries, right? And mm-hmm. he have, he has a, I believe, he even has a safety too, if I'm not mistaken. Really? But I mean, he has 81 tackles. Yeah. He's... And how many games have we? They, seven, they played they, seven. They just, they just had a bye week, so seven in seven games, 81 tackles. It's there's not there aren't many guys who hit a hundred. Okay. So um, we're gonna go. Um, we're going to take a break here. I have Vegas three, but you have three. We're just going to... At three, I've got uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Baltimore's a close four, man. Okay, I have Vegas, Vegas three. We're going to interrupt this real quick. Okay, what? Breaking what? news. Melvin Ingram. Traded? Just got traded to the Chiefs. It's official now? Uh-huh. <laughs> so... We, I, I'm, actually, I'm actually really happy about that. He did not want to be here. Yeah, so good for him. That was kind of where he wanted to go in the first place. Um, so that, that's a good move, I think, for Kansas City. Um, now our NFC top three teams, I'm going to start on this one. Number one, I got the Cowboys. I think that, that, now you guys wanted hot takes. You're getting your hot takes. Um, the Cowboys, I mean, what don't they have? They have a really good defense. Now I think Trayvon Diggs is a little bit overrated, but... Because he gives up a ton of yards. He, he did lock down Jefferson this week, though. And I set Justin yep. Jefferson in fantasy. I felt pretty good about that. Um, I lost my fantasy match by 1.6 points, though. I won. I won. Yeah, I did Holmes and Tiger Kill came back down 30-plus points. Came back, got me the dub. I was really happy. So I think, I think with the Cowboys, their biggest issue is Dak and his health. They need him to stay healthy. And I think... If they do that, they can make the NFC Championship game. And I, I think, I think their like their biggest issue, outside of Dak, because Dak's clearly the biggest issue, but like position group wise, is the secondary. And yeah. even then, they're not bad. There's other and, than outside of Dicks, of course. Yeah, there's five NFC teams right now 
that you could put in any order in the top three to five, and it's like, oh, yeah, you're probably right. You're, it, it, like, yeah, they're so close. Like, number one, I got the Rams. Yeah. And, I mean, they this is an elite team. Like, yeah. they are obviously all in. The one they, They've already made a move, which we'll talk about in a little bit. I don't want to mention it now. We'll say it in a few minutes. But the only other move that they're about to make is trading Deshaun Jackson. Yeah, and I, I think, they, and I think they'll cut him. I don't think anyone's going to trade for him. I think some. I think they'll just cut him. Yeah, most likely. I'm hoping they can get a trade because he's a, he's a, he's still a good receiver. Not yeah, he's had some, he's had a couple of nice plays this year. He's had he's definitely still productive. I understand he's old, but he was only on a one year contract with them anyway. So he just finishes out the contract with the team, and then you know maybe resigns for one more year, maybe retires. You know, nothing crazy big, right? But uh, Rams are easy number one. My number two though. Um, is the Arizona Cardinals. Okay, I got the Packers. Yeah, I mean, people are going to be upset that I have the Cardinals over the Packers, even though the Packers just beat them, right? But the Cardinals were one playoff, and I'm not even going to fully blame A.J. Green. Terrible route, but that is not you, – you can look at the full play. That is not who it should have gone to. No. That was meant for Christian Kirk on the slant route inside. Watch the play. I think Kyler Murray made a bad read. I mean, A.J. – Green made a ter- had a terrible route. Yeah, but, that wasn't a route. It was a run blocking assignment. Yeah, he didn't know what was going on. Um, for, so with the Packers, I think if once they get Aaron Rodgers is playing really good again this year. Um, so what, if he's playing all well, the teams, it's going to be good. Devontae Adams will be back in a week or two. Mm-hmm. Um, number three, I have the Rams. They could be. They could be first. They really could. Um, I just. Yeah. They really got. They got their butts kicked pretty good by the Cardinals though, a couple weeks ago. That is true. And, I, again, I mean, that's why I have the Cardinals so high as well. I really think the NFC West is the hardest division. Yeah. When it comes to, like, the top of it. The top two teams, Cause yeah. Obviously, because it's really separated right now, the top two teams and the bottom two. Yeah. Uh, but my three is Dallas. I mean, you had them on one. I mean, this is a great – this is a very complete team, and coaching is a big part of it. Yeah. Considering this defense. Other than Mike McCarthy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. No. We're talk- let's, let's, let's focus on the coordinators. Yeah. Colin Moore uh, is making this offense look amazing. He's going to get a head coaching job Dan this offseason. Quinn, Dan Quinn makes this defense look really good. Yeah. Which surprised me because he was not that great of a coach. But he was an incredible best, defensive coordinator before that. Especially, yeah, he was, he was great at coaching that uh, defense for the Falcons Super Bowl team. That's why that defense was so good. Legion of Boom and Seattle, too. Well, I mean... Even then. Yeah. Uh, so, I, th- you know, with the NFC, it's just so – it's wide open. There's five good teams, and then after that, I guess you got the Saints, too, and the, even then, I mean, it, yeah, it's going to be a dogfight for that six and seven spot. Oh, for sure. Because like, 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 you got the Panthers. Panthers are held hold it right now. Yeah. I, so, mean, the, I mean, obviously – The Dallas, Niners. Dallas wins the East. Dallas wins the East. Bucks. We kind of know who's going to win the division other than the West. I, I genuinely think it's just a fight for that final seed. Because yeah. I think – uh, we kind of know who's going to make it. You know, the winner of the NFC West gets the one seed, whatever, you know. The other yeah. one gets the fifth. I think Saints slash Bucks gets sixth and whatever wins the division, and then it's just down to seven, yeah. which I think is going to be Minnesota. Honestly. I can see that. I'm calling that now. So um, we've been talking throughout the episode of the trade deadline, and there's been two big trades, and we already we already had, like, the uh, – Yesterday we had the Von Miller trade. Yeah, yesterday we had the Von Miller. We want to talk about that. We'll go with that first. Uh, major move. You know, we last week had named many guys who we thought could have gotten traded. We didn't. Think Von that Miller that. was not one of them. I mean, but it makes sense. I wanted Von Miller traded since last offseason. Yeah. Personally, I'm not. I never thought it was going to happen, but I said it should have. Yeah. So I'm glad um, they decided to do it. Yeah, I think it's a great move for both parties. Yeah, Denver got a good return. It was a it was reported to be a bidding war between four teams, which shocks me that so many teams were interested in him. I mean, he was AFC Defensive Player of the Month. To yeah, be fair. So he was playing incredible football. So I think great move. I think he fits perfectly in the system. Who would have ever thought a few years ago that we're gonna have a defensive line with Donald and Miller? Yeah, like, who would have ever? And Leonard Floyd is also playing well out there. And Leonard Floyd's playing great. The rest of this interior D line: Sawa Two and Sebastian Joseph Day, Sean Robinson. So, and then the other big trade that happened is another pass rusher, Melvin Ingram going. Which is why we had the little cut yeah. in the uh, episode, but because that just got announced like what two, three minutes ago. Yeah. So, so Melvin Ingram, he's going from Pittsburgh to Kansas City. Pittsburgh's getting a sixth round pick for him. 
Um, so I, I think that's a good move for Kansas City. They won the game against the Giants barely. Mm-hmm. Their defense is still bad. You know, if I'm being completely honest, as a Steelers fan, uh, I don't know how to feel yet. If I'm, I'm going to be James Who's a backup? For Pittsburgh? Yeah. I mean, we, got, we got Alex Heisman. Yeah. Alex, the, the reports as of like yesterday were saying – uh, that they wanted, they were actively trying to trade him because he supposedly thought he was so much better than Alex Highsmith, and we don't need that in the locker room. That is not something I'm happy yeah. to hear because it's it's not, it's just not true. Highsmith is better. Yeah, he's been so, playing good. So but my issue is, I just didn't think we got enough. I think we could have gotten a bit more. Trade but, deadline trades usually don't give. Exactly, which is why I'm not too upset. A six round pick is nice. Maybe we use that in a seventh to trade up somewhere in the draft. Yeah, like a day three pick. Whatever. Exactly, trade up to get it to like a fourth rounder maybe, and hopefully snag someone, which would be nice. But so I think, I think there's gonna be some more movement. We'll talk about on the next episode on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Um, or Thursday or Friday, I'm not sure when we're going to do the next one. I believe it's, yeah, you know, um, later in the week. Yeah, the end mm-hmm. of the week. We'll talk about what happened at the trade deadline. Because um, as of right now, 9.08 on Tuesday, there is about uh, six hours left. Six? Yeah, cause it, and it goes till 3 o'clock Central Oh, it's 3. Time. It's 3 Central Time. I was so. thinking four because of Eastern. Okay, yeah. So we got six more hours of the trade deadline to go, and we'll we'll see where this we'll see where this trade deadline takes us. Yeah, hopefully there's some more big moves, but that's going to be it for episode four of the Play Action Podcast presented by Worst Student Media. I'm Brandon Smith. He's TJ Haas. Have a good day.